for Betty Paris and her cousin Abigail Williams. Life in 17th century Salem was strict. As daughter and niece of the Reverend Paris, they were not allowed to have games or toys. Such play was a sign of idleness when they should be concentrating on chores and Bible verses. But unbeknownst to the Reverend, Betty, Abigail, and other girls were spending evenings by the kitchen fire with Paris's Caribbean slave, Tichuba. Tichuba would entertain them with magic, fortune-telling, and stories from her native island of Barbados. Such activities were strictly forbidden by Puritan code. In January, Betty and Abigail began to exhibit strange behavior, screaming, twitching, and rolling on the floor. The village doctor was certain that the girls were the victims of witchcraft. The first public display of their affliction came the last Sunday in January. As her father read from the pulpit, Betty Paris screamed and fell into a fit. Other girls, including 12-year-old Ann Putnam, followed. One barked like a dog, another flapped her arms like a bird, others writhed as if being choked. Frightened by the hysteria, the townspeople begged the girls to identify their wicked tormentors. With pressure mounting, the girls finally cried out three names, Tichuba, Sarah Good, and Sarah Osborne, a slave, a homeless beggar, and a sickly old woman who had married her servant. Three social outcasts who were despised and distrusted by the townspeople. When the three accused witches appeared before the magistrates, Osborne and Good maintained their innocence, but Tichuba, perhaps frightened after being beaten by Reverend Paris, confessed and claimed there were other witches in Salem. Her admission of witchcraft sparked a wave of paranoia and accusations. The girls began to point fingers at other townspeople. They claimed that spirits of the alleged witches would secretly visit and hurt them. No one was safe from their accusations. There was Rebecca Nurse, the gentle grandmother and pious churchgoer. John Proctor, the wealthy farmer who had warned against the girls' outbursts. Even Dorcas Good, the little four-year-old who had spent months chained to the prison wall. By the middle of spring, more than 150 were in jail, including some of the village's most prominent figures. The Salem Witch Trials began June 2nd, 1692. Eight days later, local tavern owner Bridget Bishop became the first alleged witch to be hanged on Gallows Hill. In the coming months, 19 more innocent victims were hanged, including the former pastor of Salem. Just before his hanging, George Burroughs flawlessly recited the Lord's Prayer, supposedly impossible for a witch, but this proof of innocence could not save him. Another man, Giles Corey was pressed to death under a pile of stones after he refused to stand trial. Four other men and women would die in jail. The accusations continued into October as the afflicted girls cried out names of Massachusetts' most reputable citizens, including the governor's wife. People began to doubt the girls' accusations and cries of protest spread across the colony. The Boston minister Increase Mather spoke out against the trials. It were better that ten suspected witches should escape than that one innocent person should be condemned. With the tide of public opinion turned, Governor Phipps ordered an end to the witch trials, stopped the executions of all convicted witches, and pardoned those still in prison. After the witch hunt hysteria subsided, most people went back to their daily lives. The judges went on to successful careers in business or politics. The girls, whose accusations had sparked this tragedy, married or moved away. Only one of the girls, Ann Putnam, ever publicly acknowledged her role in the hysteria. In 1706, she stood before the church and the pastor read her statement. It was a great delusion of Satan that deceived me at that sad time. I desire to lie in the dust and earnestly beg forgiveness. But even for those pardoned, life would never be the same. Most would live out their lives in poverty and sickness. Their 
reputations forever tarnished.